Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us on the news briefing. We still have a couple of presenters uh, yet to join, but in the interest of time, I thought we'd go ahead and get started. And I do see that um, I'm hoping Maria Ferdin won't mind uh, uh, stepping up a little early and uh, talking first about um, home inspections and um, other things that the environmental health has been doing in Pajaro. Hi, Maria. Hi there. Yes, so um, I'm going to give a summary of the um, home inspections that we've um, conducted over the last, I'd say, week or, or so. We've done um, approximately 53 um, housing inspections, and these include um, multifamily units, apartments and trailer parks, and single family dwellings. And um, we, were, we did these a, as a proactive measure to get out into the community um, for people who have concerns about um, mold in their homes. And what we've observed um, by and large is that the homes are um, in, in good repair. We've had approximately 7% where we observed either the home was um, actively being repaired or had gone or had done some repair on the um, interior walls or um, were needing some remediation due to observed um, concerns like um, high moisture content. And high moisture in this respect, it means that um, using, um, the inspector was using a moisture moisture reader and anything, anything above 17% was, um, was, was something of concern and was noted in the inspection report and provided to the, um, to the resident. We only observed one, um, one home that had that reading. So overall, um, um, again, we, we conducted uh, 53 inspections of um, multifamily units and single family um, homes. And overall, they looked um, in relatively good order. And a lot of these, um, a lot of these um, homes uh, were reported that water did not enter into the living spaces. So that was, that was good. That was good to observe. Um, the inspectors were out on Fremont Street, Gorda, San Juan, um, Railroad and Jonathan. And so far we haven't received any um, calls from the community to go out and do, their, do the inspections, but we're, our hotline is still open for that. And that is 755-4505. Maria, could you repeat the number that you gave of the number of inspections that you've done? Um, that would be a total of 53 inspections. That in but that includes multifamily units and these would include apartments. So inspectors would have done potentially multiple units within a, a multifamily dwelling. So that number um, could, be, could be higher. But overall, we have um, 53 inspection reports for those, um, for those inspections in Pajaro. Thank you. I'm, I'm hoping you'll be able to stay on a little bit in case there are questions, but it sounds like what you're seeing at this point is fairly good news for residents in Pajaro in terms of mold remediation that might be needed. Um, it is good. What we're also observing is that the residents are being proactive in what they need. And they're asking questions of the inspectors of where can I get resources and things like that. As, but as far as the interior um, homes themselves, um, what we're observing is actually very good news. But um, for those who still have concerns, uh, the hotline is still open and we're still available to do the home inspections um, um, where, when available, when needed. Thank you. And if you could still stay on in case we have some questions. I um, want to share some information that came to us from Hope Crisis Response Network. You may have heard of them. They have done uh, quite a bit of work in Pajaro doing muck outs, but they're also able to do some remediation, some mold remediation. And they were not able to join us on the briefing day, but they sent this information and I wanted to share it with you. I'll also email it to our media partners uh, after this is over. But Hope Crisis Response Network tells us they have a limited number of home mold remediation appointments available to homeowners in Pajaro. To qualify, you must meet these requirements, proof of ownership and proof of denial from your insurance carrier, SBA and FEMA. So for people who are in need, they can stop by the Hope City Command Center, which is located at 250 Salinas Road, um, or you can email info at hcrn.info 
to try to find out more about that. And again, I'll send that out to our media partners after this is over. Uh, we now have Laura Emmons with our Department of Emergency Management. She's going to share with us some updated information on the debris, curbside debris wrap up, which is uh, ending, coming to an end, and also what is ahead, which is vehicle abatement. Hi, Laura. And so we are working to the last day to put debris on the curb was uh, April 24th. So we are, you know, working through, you know, the debris that was left out on April 24th in order to conclude the curbside portion of our debris operations. The flood debris drop off site will remain open until May 5th, and that's open to also possible additional extensions based on community need. We are also going to begin the process of addressing abandoned uh, vehicles that may have been flooded and are now unable to move. We are encouraging residents to really address their own vehicle. That would be our preference and I think what is best for those residents so they can you know, contact their insurance. They can, um, if there is no possible options with insurance, they can also work to salvage their vehicle, which means they can get, you know, the cash for their vehicle, which is what we would prefer, but we do have to move forward with vehicle abatement, which we will begin on May 1st. Uh, once uh, law enforcement does tag a vehicle, residents do have only 72 hours to address that vehicle before it will be towed. So that's why we are really encouraging people now to start that process on addressing uh, their vehicle. Thank you so much. Maya, you're on mute. Thank you so much. Um, thank you very much, Laura, for that for that update. And again, we will be sending out a follow up on the vehicle abatement after this is over to our media partners. Now we'd like to bring in our uh, partners from FEMA. We have Tiana Suber on the call and also Carizia Ortiz Serrano, both from FEMA. They've been working very hard in Pajaro and we're really happy to have them here for an update. Hello, ladies. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you for having us um, once again, once, once a week. Um, so I'm going to share our um, disaster overall hey. um, indiv individual household uh, programs. Um, we okay. have over 5 million. Hold on, Tiana. Uh, Joy, if you would mute your phone, that would be great. Sorry. That's all right. Go ahead, Tiana. Um, over 5 million have been approved for overall in the disaster um, for registration numbers. Uh, for Monterey, there's been so far 927. Uh, for Santa Cruz, 612. And San Benito, 118. Um, we wanted to share with you that our disaster survivor assistance teams will be at the Santa Cruz Fairgrounds, which is 2601 East Lake Avenue in Watsonville to register people um, from six to nine, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And that's to uh, catch some of those residents that are getting off of work and, um, and coming back to that shelter and they'll be able to uh, register or at least uh, check on their application. Um, and that's pretty much it from our side as far as an update. Um, if anyone has any uh, questions about uh, disaster survivor assistance teams, uh, just ask, but they will be there um, for the rest of this week, starting today, uh, registering people at the shelter. And yes, did you have a question? Uh, Tiana, I just wanted to ask you, you said you were going to the shelter, but also are you going to do any more door-to-door -door work? Because it sounds like you're really trying to get into the community and make sure all those who can apply have applied. Yes, ma'am. So we have been, um, and I've been with them once uh, last week in uh, Coralitos. Uh, we are still going in different counties all around the state, going door to door, um, making sure that people are registered, um, making sure that people know where our disaster recovery centers are, and um, you know, just making sure everybody uh, has access to the resource. So yes, we are still out there. We are still doing uh, door to door. We are 
um, in shelters, we are in, uh, you know, different uh, temporary locations uh, to hit, um, you know, certain areas that are, are not able to get to our disaster recovery center. So those programs are still going on. And, um, you know, if you're um, able to come to our disaster recovery center, if you have any questions about any of the programs or any of the things throughout your application process, we are still here to help those in need. Thank and, you, Tia. Uh, yes, and I'll pass it on to Carixia. Thank you, Tiana, y muchas gracias a todos. Muy buenos días. Soy Carixia Ortiz, y FEMA continúa brindando la asistencia por desastre a todas las personas que hayan sufrido algún daño en su residencia o que hayan tenido algún percance particular relacionado con los desastres eh, ocurridos a partir de, del 21 de febrero hasta el presente. En los centros de asistencia por desastre que tenemos en en los ocho condados que están aprobados la declaración de desastre, hemos registrado ya, uh, tenemos eh, más de 5.000 registraciones y para eh, un total de dinero identificado para esos eh, registros realizados de más de 5 millones de dólares. Eh, eh, específicamente, los registros para el condado de Monterrey han sido hasta el momento, hasta el día de ayer, 927, en Santa Cruz 612 y en San Benito eh, 118. Tenemos otros cinco condados que también pues tienen, eh, continúan realizando eh, registraciones y el servicio a los sobrevivientes. Sí queremos destacar que eh, hoy, mañana jueves y el viernes de 6 de la tarde a 9 de la noche, eh, el equipo de asistencia en desastre de FEMA estará ofreciendo el, el servicio y la ayuda para realizar el, el registro de la asistencia por desastre en el recinto ferial de Santa Cruz eh, y la dirección es la 2601E Lake Avenue en Watsonville. Así que las personas que eh, aún necesiten hacer su registro o las personas que estén eh, quedándose ¿no? este, eh, por la razón de la emergencia en, en el recinto ferial de Santa Cruz y se le ha hecho difícil llegar hasta los centros de asistencia por desastre, pues sepan que el, hoy miércoles, mañana jueves y el viernes estará el equipo de FEMA brindando su ayuda de 6 de la tarde a 9 de la noche para el beneficio de quienes no han podido realizarlo aún. Eh, el equipo de FEMA continúa también eh, dando la yendo puerta a puerta, casa a casa, en distintos lugares identificados donde se entiende que personas pudieran necesitar la asistencia de FEMA. Así que eh, se han visitado distintas eh, ciudades, distintas eh, áreas de estos condados donde se aprobó la, la declaración de desastre y tan reciente como días anteriores estuvieron en el área de Corralitos, en Santa Cruz. Así que y en distintos lugares que se han identificado. Si, si surgiera la necesidad de llegar a algún otro lugar, eh, nos los pueden compartir y el equipo de FEMA estará asistiendo según sea, sea necesario. Así que eso sería ¿verdad? La, la información que tenemos hasta el momento y que queríamos compartir de, de ese evento que comienza hoy en, la, en el recinto ferial. Así que cualquier pregunta adicional, cualquier duda que tengan, pues pueden... Eh, con, estamos disponibles para preguntas. Igualmente, vamos a compartir en el chat todos la, los centros de asistencia por desastre con sus horarios, que, pues, que hay algunos que ahora pues, no van a estar en operaciones los domingos. Así que nada, les vamos a compartir la información próximamente en el chat. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much, uh, Kritia. And then Tiana, any last words on that? Or will you be able to stay on for questions? Uh, yeah, we can stay on for questions. And uh, Carixia, like she said, she will put the uh, DRC locations in the chat. And um, I can put the um, individual household programs approved numbers, uh, the exact number in the chat as well. So uh, yeah, we'll stay for questions if needed. Thank you very much. And now we'd like to have our friend from the Small Business Administration, Marielle Carti, uh, share with us information about their work in Pajaro. Good afternoon, Marielle. Good afternoon. Can you hear me well? Yes. 
Okay, that's good. Thank you. Okay, so um, the information that we have until yesterday, we have received uh, more than 400 uh, um, um, home application referral from FEMA. And also we have received approximately 111 small business application referral from FEMA as well. In total, we have received 3,142 application referral from FEMA, that, that is very good. And we have approved more than $4 million so far until yesterday, that is very good. We're still working because we need, uh, we still need to distribute the information regarding our disaster assistance because uh, still the community think that we just offer disaster assistance for business owners. And we also um, offer disaster assistance for homeowners and renters, and that is very important. And when I, uh, when I say renters, and homeowners, they can apply for a personal damage and that includes their cars. So that is, that is a very good information. And uh, I will say the same information in Spanish. Buenas tardes todo el mundo. Vamos, entonces, hemos recibido 455 referidos para eh, aplicaciones de hogares en el condado de Monterrey referidos por FEMA. Hemos recibido 111 aplicaciones de negocios referidos por FEMA, en el condado, eh, por FEMA perdón, en el condado de Monterrey. Hemos recibido en total de todos los condados 3,142 aplicaciones referidas por FEMA y hemos aprobado más de 4 millones de, 4 millones de dólares eh, en, en asistencia por desastre de parte de la SBA. Todavía continuamos distribuyendo la información informándole a la comunidad que nosotros ofrecemos asistencia para la recuperación por desastre, no solo a los negocios, sino que también ofrecemos asistencia a los dueños de sus propiedades y a las personas que rentan. Así que muchísimas gracias. If you have any question, I'm, I'm, here. I'm here. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for that, that great information. And I, we love to see those numbers go up. The, and the more who apply, the more who get help. That is very true. Thank you so much, Maya. Thank you. And then now we're going to turn to our friends at All In. We've got Tanya Costa here, who's brought a friend with her to talk about a new opportunity for both uh, volunteering and donations for our residents in Pajaro. Hi, Tanya. Hello, Maya. Thank you for including us in today's briefing. Um, Joy Anderson Gonzalez is here. She is the past governor of the Rotary Club. Together, Rotary and Jim work together to get us a very large donation, um, which they are estimating is worth $1 million. Um, the donations include 500 mattresses and, um, Joy, is it 98 or 96 pallets? Oh, you're- 96 <laughs> pallets of Amazon home goods. So um, we have 96 pallets of Amazon home goods coming today or tomorrow. Um, we had a little mishap at the warehouse, which we thought we would be receiving and distri distributing items. We are currently looking at two places today. Um, and when we know where we'll be, we will let everyone know. Um, Joy, do you want to um, you want to say a little bit about what you're doing? Oh, absolutely! Thank you. So, um, Rotary District 5230, which covers all of Monterey County, along with Fresno, Tulare, and Kings County in the Valley, um, has stepped up to uh, secure monetary donations that we are using in partnership with GEM, uh, Global Empowerment Mission who does disaster relief all over the world. And they have the buying power and the donors that make these, uh, these goods available to us. So we are expecting four uh, semi-trailers to arrive into town tomorrow morning. And right now we are uh, signing up volunteers via a Sign Up Genius link. Um, and it's going really well. And as soon as we find out the location this afternoon, I'll be sending out more information on that as well. But uh, this is our second go around in the Pajaro area. We were there in March with just some emergency boxes and, and 
basic things like diapers and and such. And this is the first phase of the first part of phase two in our efforts. And I just wanted to let everybody know that uh, Rotary District 5230 will continue to do whatever we can as this uh, progresses. And uh, that's about it. We're here to help. So Joy, tell us what you need right now from the community. What, what are the needs to get this donation uh, from the trucks into wherever it's gonna be stored and then out to exactly. those who need it? Exactly, thank you. Uh, we will need people tomorrow uh, to unload the trucks. And so we're looking for about 50 volunteers. Uh, we're still shy of that. Uh, I looked at the numbers this morning. So that shift will run from eight to noon and then we start sorting. Um, those boxes that come in from Amazon, those 96 boxes, they're huge. And they're just filled with all kinds of miscellaneous things. So they have to be sorted so that we're ready when we uh, bring in the residents to, to basically shop is what we call it. Then um, it'll make some sense because there's a lot of digging through. And that's why I've set aside uh, Thursday afternoon, Friday, and all day Saturday for sorting because it, it's a lot. So, um, so unloading the trucks Thursday morning, we need volunteers. We need volunteers that afternoon, all day Friday, and all day Saturday for sure. And then people are wondering once you get this, and Tanya, sorry, I, uh, it, it may have stepped over you. Once it gets all sorted, what is the plan? I think there are people wanting to make sure, you know, how are the residents going to get these, these goods that, that really need it, that, that the right people get these donations? Tanya, you want to address oh. that? Yeah. Um, we are working very closely with FEMA as well as Kevin with Hope City. We're making sure that the homes are ready to receive the products. Um, our goal is to humanize the receiving of these items by welcoming the families to come in and to shop for the items um, that will make them feel a little more normal. Um, we wanna be very dignified. We don't wanna, so what we don't want is the word like mass distribu distribution. We don't want people waiting in line and hoping that they're first come first serve, or if I don't take this now, I'm never gonna get it again. Wherever we land, we plan on being there for long-term recovery, which means that when people are ready, we're gonna welcome them in and they'll be able to shop the items that they need. We're gonna have two parts of this. The furniture is staying at the Moss Landing warehouse that we originally thought we would be in. Um, for the furniture, you would call Sister Dolores at Casa de la Cultura, and um, she will help the families there with the bed frames. Um, they're collecting items there. We're helping them. For the Amazon products, for the mattresses, and anything kind of kindness, kindness closet, which is what all in does year round, they'll be invited to shop in um, wherever we land but we want to make sure that people know it's not a mass distribution. We don't have a date and time yet. We want to make sure that when we give a family something, we're not, we're helping them and not hurting them and making sure that it doesn't interfere with FEMA and their ability to give somebody a grant and then um, unknowingly um, violating their contract or their agreement with FEMA. So um, I think what we're gonna do is, I, I don't wanna say we're gonna take it slow because um, we're moving very quickly, but we're gonna do it right. We're gonna make sure we have all our ducks in order. And I just can't thank Joy and um, Jem enough for bringing these donations into our community and allowing All In to help distribute them and um, work with them. So, so for, for people who want to help, we wanna get that sign up genius link out there for people to sign up for both uh, offloading and then sorting. And then when the time comes, we'll be really thrilled to announce when residents can go shopping. So I think Joy has her sign up for the, um, for the initial offloading sorting um, starting tomorrow through Monday. So correct. she will be there Friday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, correct? And then after Monday, they can go to allinmonterey.org 
because we will have um, more donations from the community and other um, other companies have reached out. So we're just hoping that this location we land in will be our long-term recovery where people can know that they'll be able to visit for the next six months um, to receive you know, whatever they need that day. We'll have daily essentials and um, warm welcomes for everyone. So both links are, are needed for, for residents. We'll get those both posted and shared. All right. Thank, thank you both. Thank this you. is very exciting. All right. Thank you so much, Maya. Thank you, Joy, for coming. You're welcome. <laughs> thank thank you. you. Very much for, for joining us today. Thank you. And then uh, we've also got Krista Honey from our health department, who's going to give us an update on what is happening with the at the Community Resource Center. And there is really a lot happening at that resource center. It's pretty active. Hi, Krista. Hi. Afternoon, everybody. Yeah, the, the Resource Center is very active. And it's, it's very dynamic because uh, we've co-created the space with community-based organizations. And uh, we're very grateful to that. Um, they're wanting to have a very welcoming space, similar to the way Tanya was talking about, um, that folks feel like they can come in and start talking uh, to an individual from an organization. It could be a case manager they've been working with already. It could be a chance for them to connect with case managers uh, from different organizations. Uh, and this could be for different types of services. So the way it's been set up is there's a welcoming and greeting area. We have often the uh, VITA community they are helping with that greeting and doing some <clears throat> initial signing in. And then we have a schedule set up outside the community resource tent area, which will show like over a three day period, the types of organizations that will be there. And we have organized those based on the, the areas of, of need and services that the organizations have been working in um, throughout the disaster response and before, and we'll be continuing after as part of the long-term recovery that we've heard a few others mention. So that would be uh, areas such as uh, for, for the current uh, situation, the FEMA appeals process, uh, quite a bit uh, for legal aid and housing, and that could be landlord tenant support and even um, some conflict resolution there as needed or mediation as needed. Uh, social, emotional and family-based organizations are there. Uh, we have had some representation here, but as well as down at the Disaster Resource Center area for mental and physical health, uh, economic relief, and then um, and community outreach uh, areas uh, around that, um, information connecting uh, around some of the needs that people have for some of those uh, donated supplies and um, as well as uh, clothing, et cetera. Um, and then just general, uh, there might be, and that could be sort of part of that community outreach. So we there's over a dozen organizations that um, may be here, um, not all at once. And we have a schedule and we work with the organizations uh, to accommodate and support their capacity as well, because they may be providing services or workshops at their own organization headquarters, and they may be down here. We're generally this, uh, we did a, a, a launch last week we're generally 3 to 7 p.m. This week, it's expanded somewhat and it varies for organizations starting anywhere at about noon and going until about 6 p.m. Um, we have had also joined a few other organizations. Uh, there's an example um, for one organization, Liberty, Liberty Care, and they are here providing more um, holistic uh, um, medical care or supports. So they're doing acupressure, uh, acupuncture um, aspects, uh, some massage. And uh, I can tell you it's very well received uh, by the community. Um, we, I see people leaving the tent with smiles after um, receiving a little bit of that care. They brought in some nice uh, relaxing music. Uh, we also have workshops, for example, positive discipline community supports. They do workshops with community members, uh, sort of for a more trauma-informed healing process. We've had donations uh, of little care bags that have um, great educational toys for, for the children and the youth that may come in with their parents. We have a children's section. So the 
um, parents or caregivers um, can be there while they're working with somebody at a table, they can sort of keep an eye on their, their child who might be there in that section. Uh, and then we have uh, interpreters that are here from Cal OES, uh, and they provide interpretation from Spanish to English or from Spanish uh, or mis to Mixteco or Spanish to um, Zapoteco. Uh, also been really important service uh, to have that available. Again, just part of the welcoming space. So we've had uh, logged in over um, 274 residents using the tent since we opened. That doesn't count all the children that are coming in as well. And uh, we're just really grateful to how this has been really put together with the, the input and collaboration of the community-based organizations. Thank you, Krista. And how long will this tent be in operation? I, I know it is not necessarily going to be there forever, but I just wondered if there's a if there's a time frame. We're definitely with the original intent was for the three weeks. We started about halfway through the first week. I'm working with the organizations, uh, along with my colleague Vicente Lara, who's at another meeting, he wasn't able to join us for the briefing, um, and with the organizations on there, what they see is the need and the capacity for that. But so definitely one more week, uh, and we will we will keep um, posted through all of our social media channels as to if it was to continue past, um, at this point, the 6th, Saturday, May 6th. Thank you very much, Krista. Great, great news and great to see that people are really taking advantage of that tent because a lot went into pulling it together and getting all those organizations together under one roof. Yeah, one of the big I, things was those uh, CalFresh disaster CalFresh applications and, 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 you know, providing that service to people to sign up here, just, just as one example as well as something that happens in a sort of temporal manner for the tent, like as things come up and we're, we're here offering a service um, that's got a time restriction like that. Certainly. I do have one question for our uh, colleagues from FEMA, uh, from Adriana Frederick. Um, how many applications have approved just for Monterey County? And I'm wondering if Tiana or Carizia might know. Hi, uh, yes, yeah, so um, our numbers are always still going, um, ongoing. So um, when we have those application processes, um, you know, when we send in, when we have applications um, and people have a determination letter that they get in the mail and um, it says that they're missing some particular information, um, once they get all that information in and they file their appeal, those numbers change daily. So. Uh, we don't have a fixed number. We are just focused on um, getting everybody, um, you know, registered, giving, getting everybody, um, you know, all, getting all of their documentations together and making sure that their application process continues to um, flow and to uh, help them upload those documents, help them to write those appeal letters. Um, we are, uh, we have been encouraging people that if you get a determination letter, do you, that you do not throw it in the trash, uh, read through the letter entirely. Um, it will tell you what FEMA needs from you. So right now we are focused on uh, just trying to get people registered and trying to get people to um, you know, keep in touch with FEMA, let us know any changes, uh, keep up with your documentation. And if you need to write an appeal as well, you can come to one of our disaster recovery centers and we can help you write that appeal and uh, make sure everything is correct in your application. And I'll let Corixia say that. Oh, go ahead. Before Corixia answers, you don't have a number of the approved ones yet for all the you know, appropriate reasons stated, but you did give us a number of 927 and that would be the number of applications? Yeah, that'll be the number of people that are registered. Okay. It's registered, it's just registered, yes ma'am. All right, thank you. And go ahead, Corixia. Gracias. Sí, hasta el momento FEMA continúa trabajando con el proceso de registro de las personas que han solicitado eh, asistencia por desastre de FEMA. Así que los registros continúan y aún así eh, puede darse el caso de que continúe el proceso también de apelación o de que un caso no se haya cerrado y esté en el proceso ¿no? de que eh, necesite más documentación 
o que se haya tenido que hacer determinadas enmiendas para añadir daños adicionales que quizás en un principio la persona quizás presentó unos daños y luego se percató de daños adicionales, pues también FEMA provee eh, ese espacio para que pueda modificarse una solicitud o incluso si la persona entiende que, que, que fue denegada, pero no es así, puede acercarse también al DRC o llamar a la línea de asistencia de FEMA para corroborar si en efecto es una, es una determinación final o no. Así que como el proceso continúa, aún no se puede establecer eh, números finales de aprobación porque todavía hay espacio de tiempo para que las personas puedan apelar, puedan modificar su, su registración o este, ¿verdad? Eh, solicitar nueva eh, asistencia diversa dentro de lo que FEMA pueda proveer en sus programas. Así que es muy importante que nuestro mensaje hasta ahora es que las personas vayan a registrarse y, y, y hagan su registro y soliciten la ayuda de FEMA porque aún estamos disponibles, eh, quedan servicios por ofrecer, hay, la ayuda está disponible, así que el proceso continúa. Eh, así que es muy importante que nos ayuden ¿no? a, a, a compartir esa información de que las personas vayan y se registren en nuestro centro de asistencia por desastre e igual si reciben una carta de FEMA y entienden que es una denegación no, no la vote y, y si no entienden eh, la carta por el lenguaje técnico es muy importante que se acerque al Centro de Asistencia por Desastre o llame a la línea de FEMA para poder aclarar todas las dudas, porque quizás en ocasiones lo que puede ser es un, es un aviso de que necesita presentar documentación adicional o necesita eh, aclarar cierta información para poder continuar con el proceso. Así que es bien importante que solicite esa ayuda de FEMA y que las personas no se queden con ninguna duda y, y, y que estén seguros de, de lo que estén eh, leyendo lo comprenda y que el proceso esté bien claro de cómo se han dado todas las determinaciones y que de toda la documentación eh, se presente correctamente. Y obviamente el proceso de FEMA es uno totalmente confidencial. Así que continuaremos dando el apoyo, ¿verdad? Hasta que eh, todas las personas eh, hábiles para registrarse lo hagan. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Any other questions for any of our participants today before we end the briefing? Seeing none, thanks very much for joining us today. Our next briefing is next Wednesday. We'll see you then.